and welcome back to my studio. I'm Barbara Swift and you're watching Be Swift Art. In today's video we're going to paint on canvas with watercolor as opposed to painting on watercolor paper. It's something new to me. I've known about it for about six months now and I've done several paintings this way and it's really fun. Really neat process. It's definitely different than painting on paper. I first learned about it on Liz Chatterton's channel on YouTube and she also wrote a book so I bought this book so it tells me all the details everything I need to know and it is painting watercolors on canvas by Liz Chatterton let me see if I can give you I don't know if that helps you or not but there you go <laughs> really good book I recommend it before you get started you have to prepare your canvas so you you paint on it what's called watercolor ground and what it is is three parts of gesso and one part of modeling paste so it comes out the consistency of maybe like a thinner frosting and you paint it on your canvas I used a roller you could use a paintbrush or you can put texture in it if you want like maybe with a palette knife it's all up to you but I used a roller you can sand it in between the layers. You got to put three layers on. Um, if you want it a smoother surface, you sand it. If you don't want it to be smooth and you're okay with the little bit of texture that the roller gives, you can do it that way. And that's what I chose to do because it reminds me most of my cold press paper by Arches that I'm used to painting on. So it has a slight texture to it. But an advantage of painting on canvas over watercolor paper is that you don't have to frame it. I love that. I get so caught up in the frames. They never are the size of my paper and I have to cut my paper down in order to fit a frame that I can buy pre-made at the craft store. Or I, you know, gotta cut the mat differently and it's real skinny on one side and thick on the other side. So if I don't have to deal with frames, more merrier I am. Let me show you a couple that I did do. Excuse me while I bend over. This one here is called Nosy Neighbor. And I just painted this on your standard canvas. See that? It's just a thin one. But I did wrap the painting all the way around to the sides. And then I did another one on the gallery wrap canvas. That I like because it has an you know inch and a half on the sides. And here's my little Ivis painting, Picnic Pirates. And you can see I painted it on the side, on the edges too. It's really nice, you don't have to frame it. And I do put a lot of my artwork in the galleries. And as they get transported back and forth from the galleries at acrylic glass that's on top of your matted, traditional matted frames, it always gets scratched. Sometimes you take the protective film off of it and there's scratches already on that acrylic. So I either have to buy more acrylic or go and purchase a whole nother frame. So this is really nice that you don't have to frame it. You do have to seal it though, however, to protect it. So I used a product called Dolan Wax and I put three coats of it, let it dry in between, and then you buff it. And once you buff it, it'll get a nice little sheen to it. The more you buff it, the glossier it gets and you let it dry for a couple weeks and it's hard like you don't even notice it's not tacky anymore I've even left paintings in my car and they didn't melt and in Florida that's something <laughs> so yeah it's really kind of a neat thing and whole new concept for me and I'm really enjoying it so what do you think you want to try it come on I'll show you how okay here's my octopus drawing on the canvas First I'm going to put just clean water on the head here. I'm just using a small round brush so I can get into those little details around the eyes and everything. And I'll start with my lightest color, put a little yellow, um, then the orange, and you can see the water underneath is really dispersing the color and making it lighter. I want to go for like a really mottled you know, look with all different colors in them. I never knew that octopus could change colors like that. Or maybe they're octopi. Or that would be plural. Yeah. So anyway, I didn't know they could change colors. They change colors with the rocks and blend in. It's like their camouflage or their defense. 
So this guy, he's sitting on the bottom of the ocean. And on the right side, there's a treasure chest that he's guarding. And then there's an anchor and a mermaid up above him. There's a school of fish. There's all kinds of things going on in this painting. I'm going to just show you the octopus, though. So I'm starting again here with the yellow and just dabbing in my um, rose color, rose matter, and a little bit of transparent orange. Just kind of dab it in right in the front there where all the legs kind of are connecting where his body kind of goes into the legs. There's like, I think they'd be like tendons or something that kind of, you know, have a uh, stick out a little bit, kind of like the back of an your ankle would be, it looks like to me. So that's what I was trying to paint in there. And I'm just going down his leg and I'm going to go in multiple colors. I'm using the rose, dioxin purple, um, phthalo blue, and the yellow, and the orange. So I'm going to use those colors throughout the whole painting. Just those colors. And I'm going back and dropping in some purple and trying to get a little texture. I'm flicking water with the tip of my brush, just clean water. And you can see where I did that on his head. It's already making little stars in there. Kind of like the same effect salt would do. But because this surface is less porous than the watercolor, 100% cotton watercolor paper would be, it makes it move just on its own with water more effectively than just on watercolor paper. Although I do use that same flicking of the water technique on watercolor paper. But this on this canvas painting the effects are almost like salt but just with plain water so there's differences between the canvas and the 100 percent cotton watercolor paper and i'd say it's mostly due to absorbency so on this canvas i've primed it with three parts gesso and one part modeling paste it's got three coats on it you don't want to do too many thick coats. This is just three thin coats because it would have the potential to crack and chip and chip and flake. So you just want to have that right amount on there. So it does make the canvas except the watercolor. And you can do a lot of your normal techniques like the salt. You can use cellophane um, to, to make uh, impressions in the paint and move it around. There's things that you can't do though, or I haven't figured it out anyway. <laughs> I was just showing you, I'm using a dagger brush. The dagger brush is flat on one side and then it's like a rounded angle on the other side and the furrow is flat. So it's nice cause you can use it to use the side of it to make a smooth line or you can use that very tip of it to get in those tight places. So it reminds me, it's almost like an angle flat brush. So either one would work in this instance and even a round brush would work. But to make my lines smoother, I like to use the side of the brush. So that's why I chose this brush. And I am kind of going out of the lines a little bit, but that's another really cool benefit about the canvas is because it doesn't absorb it as much, you can just wipe it away. So you saw I put like green on there and just wiped it right away with my paper towel. So that's why it was wet, but if it's dry, you just have to reactivate it with water and then you can clean up any places that you went out of the lines with just your paintbrush, damp paintbrush, wipe it off on your paper towel. You might have to go back a couple times, clean water, wipe it off, soak it up with your paintbrush, wipe it off on your paper towel, and you should be able to get it right back down to the white canvas. And that's also great if you want to wipe out highlights. The canvas is really great for that. So if something got um, too dark or you covered up a highlight spot, you can just wipe it out with a damp brush after it's dry. Take your damp brush, wipe it, and you should be able to get right back to white canvas if you wanted to go that far. Just with a couple swipes. So that's really fun. 
and you can see the colors blend really nice on the canvas which is one of the beautiful things about watercolors the color blending and they blend very well right here I'm starting with the orange under his head because the legs on either side have the purple and the rose and I don't want them to blend in to be like one dark area in the painting so I use the brighter color there I will go back and put some shadows in but also the same thing where the legs cross there I don't want to use the exact same color so I'm putting just a little bit more blue in there to give it some separation so I'm putting water down first and then I'm just dabbing my colors in and then I'm sprinkling it with water from either my paintbrush or my fingers to make that water move and have those little blotchies. I'm doing that on purpose. So yes, octopuses are very interesting creatures. I follow Octonation. Octonation has daily posts on um, Instagram and Facebook. They um, are divers and it's, it's a group and they have all kinds of interesting facts about different octopus and you know there's some little tiny ones and great big ones um, when I was a kid I was probably like eight ten years old there was an aquarium shop in our town and my parents had a wall of fish tanks they probably had ten fish tanks and in we had freshwater fish we had a tank that was just seahorses and we'd go to this aquarium shop to buy fish on the weekends and to bring them home, put them in our tanks. They had in that shop this giant, oh, I couldn't even tell you. His head was probably two feet long, just the head, and then all the long tentacles, you know, coming out. And they, they would um, stick those tentacles right against the glass, and you could see those suction cups, and they'd all be moving individually. Like, they don't all move at the same time. They all move individually so that it helps the octopus to maneuver itself all around. And he told me that if he pulled that octopus out by his leg, it would release its leg and grow a new one. So that was interesting. I still remember that many years ago now, but I still remember when he told me that I couldn't believe that any animal could do that, but they do. <laughs> interesting. So I used to love to go to that shop and just watch the octopus so I really liked them some people think they're creepy but I think they're just really cool and also they have many different textures different colors different lumps and bumps and stuff on their on their bodies so I think you could paint this octopus any way your imagination could come up with and you would probably find one that resembled it for in real life in the ocean somewhere in the world we're just going to keep continuing around painting the legs so wherever the paint is wet from the one I just painted I'm skipping over to one that is dry all the way around so I'm not touching wet edges with wet paint because otherwise it'll just blend right into the the one previous so I'm just kind of skipping around and doing these legs I'm doing blue on all of the ends, all the tips of the legs, and working into putting in some darker blue. And then wherever I put the purple, I'm putting a little blue there. Wherever I put the rose, I'm putting a little purple dots in there. Wherever I put the orange, I'm putting the rose dots in there. And then the orange dots into the yellow. So to make that mottled look. So over here, there's so much of the blue purples I'm going to go ahead and start with the yellow and the yellow and the rose make a kind of coral color and then when I add the orange to the yellow it makes a, a orange yellow so you're mixing your paints right on the canvas I'm not mixing them prior I'm just taking them straight out of the little puddles that I make and then mixing those paints right on the canvas and it gives a nice gradual effect of the color change in the little tentacles there 
And then wherever there's a curve, I might put a little bit darker in that curve like I'm doing there. Just to almost build my shadows in now or give it some dimension. Because that's one disadvantage I found with the canvas as opposed to the watercolor paper. If I go back over it again with another color of paint, even once it's dry, it wipes away the paint underneath. So you almost have to just layer the colors very gently on top of each other if you're going to do like a glaze or any kind of wash over the top of this. So you have to be careful when you're doing that. But the good news is, is that you can wipe it all back down and start again in that one area. And it's pretty easy to blend your colors. So I'm just going to reinforce those indentations there in the front. And I'll make his eye just a little larger. So I'm just taking the orange and the rose, putting those colors in there, just kind of dabbing them in there. And using my brush to blend them with just damp water on there. And I'll try to put a few little of the shadows in and put a few around the eye and then coming down the front of his face. And I'm gonna let those all dry and now I'm going to paint the underneath side of the tentacle. This is the part where those little suction cups, I call them, um, are all attached. And they move individually, like I said, and some of them are smaller and some of them are larger. Some of them will stick out a little further. So it's up to you how crazy you want to go with it. You can really exaggerate those suction cups and make them, you know, really kind of a funky looking octopus. Um, in this one, I don't want to go too wild with them because I have so much going on and so much coral that I'm going to paint in this painting. And the mermaid is the focus of this whole canvas. But today we're just starting with the octopus and I'm showing you that. The canvas is big. It's 48 by, I believe, 36 inches. So to get it all under the camera to show you how I paint that whole painting, would, I'd have to put the camera on the ceiling. So you're, you're only going to see sections of it as I go along. But it'll probably take me the rest of the summer to complete the whole thing and do my other projects in between. So what I'm doing here is I'm using opposite colors. So here... I have orange and the rose, so I'm going to put the blue in there so that it shows that there's a contrast there so that you can separate the underneath part of the tentacle with the top part of it. So wherever there is a darker color, I'll put a lighter color. And wherever there's a lighter color, I'll put a darker color. So it's my imagination. I don't know of an octopus that looks like this. This is just kind of my painting style. I use all these colors all the time in a lot of my paintings. Um, everybody, you know, they all turn out rainbow, I guess. <laughs> but hey, you know, I love color. So you gotta express yourself so you can do it in whatever colors you want. And did you know that the pupil in the octopus's eye is horizontal? Kind of like a goat. It looks like a goat eye to me. So in that eye, I put some yellow and dabbed in some orange just to give it some dimension. And then I put the pupil in once it was dry. So here I'm going to go with some shadows. We'll put some shadows. I'm doing it very quickly because look at if you go over that while it's still wet with your brush, it just wipes it off. See that right in that area? So I'm going to have to let that dry and then come back and try to lay some more shadows in there. I tried to make it as even as I could. And I'll just put some where the legs cross. And I'll put some underneath the legs. And then where his, I'm going to call it his body. Yes, that was dry there. So I'll just dab a little bit of shadow in there. That's where his head's laying over his legs. So I want to define a few areas. So I'll put a little shadow there. And... Take a good look at it, see if I need any more shadows anywhere else. But you gotta lay them down very quickly. Yeah, I think I could put a shadow right in there and separate those legs a little bit. 
there's going to be all those little suction cups in there. So I'm not going to go ahead and shade it in because you won't see it anyway right there. So just check in to see if I missed any spots. I don't think that I did. So you can see now where that paint is all drying. You can see where the water droplets have made that water kind of disperse away from the water. And now I'm going to use my Doc Martens Bleed Proof White. Doc PH Martin Bleed Proof White. This is just a white pigment. It's very opaque, almost chalky, so you don't want to use a lot of it. I use it mainly for highlights. So I'm going to take a fine brush here, add some water to it. It's really thick in the jar. It's um, kind of like paint right out of the tube in the jar. I'll add a few little highlights around his eye and on the head there. I'm going to put some spots, make them really gnarly. Put some spots on him. And I'm coming back with just some water, and this is water soluble. It's actually like a white opaque watercolor. And you can draw some more spots on his head. So some of them look like they're almost from the moon. So that's what I'm going with here, just drawing some circles around those splotches that I put on there. It is dry though by the time I put the circles on. Put a little more highlights around his eye. So there's not really a whole lot of sunshine in the ocean, but you know, there is lights and darks because where the coral grows, it's not really that deep. It's deep, but not compared to the rest of the ocean. So I put some water down and now he's laying on the bottom of the ocean floor in the sand. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some browns in here. And in the tight areas, I don't put water because I don't wanna risk my paintbrush moving that water over on top of the legs because then that would make it uh, move that paint even though it's dry. And that's one of the things with canvas. You gotta be very careful of that. I'll put a little bit of the rose in there, make it more of a pinkish color sand. And then I'm gonna come back with some blue and I'm just making them a little blue but some streaks in there also because Maybe there's rays coming from the sun up above. And I think that's what I'm going to do with the top of the painting is put rays in there. So I'm just starting them now, but I will, after I complete all the elements in the painting, I always come back and adjust. So I'm just putting a base. This is like a little underpainting. Put some sand. There's my treasure chest with lots of gold in it. So that octopus is rich. I don't know where he's going to spend it, but <laughs> he's got a lot of money. He's guarding it. We'll just dab in some blue. And then I'm just taking my dirty brush and whatever colors I have on there. Because that'll all be kind of shadowy and murky right there. Put a little bit more brown as we go around and in between all these little spaces. So you got to be careful. Put some rows. So I'm dabbing the paint kind of in the middle and then just working my way towards the octopus so there's not too much water. And put a little bit more rose. And now I'm thinking live rock perhaps. So I'm putting the background in for some live rock or maybe some coral that I can paint on top of it. And I'm purposely not being really careful to make it solid or even because I'm going to paint on top of that and those colors underneath are going to help when I paint over the top with the coral. And I'm thinking probably some purple sea polyps here, so I'm leaving some white spaces in there so I can work with them. And maybe an elegance coral over here. I used to have a reef tank. I had a 55 gallon reef tank and you know, that's, you know, me and my husband then picked up the hobby that I had as a kid and he did too actually. We had that in common. So we got ourselves a reef tank and spent all our money on fish. <laughs> and we'd go and buy this live rock. And I guess it came from the Florida Keys, but we were up in Michigan. And, you know, you'd put these rocks in and we'd put corals in and these beautiful fish. And I thought they were very expensive, these fish. And then all of a sudden, things would start popping out out of the live rock. We'd get little sea polyps and little crabs and the crabs you could barely see them they match the rock the bad thing about the crabs 
is they ate all the coral and they ate the fish. (laughs) They'd reach right up and grab them. And they only came out at night and we could never find them. But one day we found them. (laughs) We we got them, caught them, got them out of that tank. This is my set of gouache. Gouache is a opaque watercolor. It comes in all different colors. So it's similar to the the Doc P.H. Martin blue beef, blue, ah, say that three times, bleed proof white, but it comes in all these colors. I put it in a separate throwaway palette because when it dries, you can't reactivate it like you do normal watercolor. And it just is like hard as a rock. You gotta chisel it out. So I put a little bit in this little dollar store palette. I think I got five for a dollar. Well, it's a dollar twenty-five now, no longer the dollar store. But anyway, that's you know, I don't feel too bad about throwing it away if I don't use up all the paint. So I'm gonna just draw these little suction cups on the bottom of his tentacles. So I'm just drawing little ovals, so where they're tiny and they're on the side, and then I work my way around to circles. So you can see I didn't want to bore you because there's an awful lot of little circles (laughs) to be painting there, but in the middle of the circles I'm painting another color so that it looks a little more interesting and maybe that it would give it some shape. Because on my painting, it's actually the octopus is not very big. He's only about maybe a foot long compared to that whole big canvas. So I can't go too crazy with all the details because he's kind of tiny. But we'll do my do our best. I'm using a double zero brush, which is really small. And I first go in and do the circle. And then after it dries a little bit, I add another color. So you can see there above my hand those blue ones where I put I put a little light blue and then I added a little dark blue, blue dot right in the center of those ones so that they look like they maybe are cupped. Here I'm painting in some purple ones right over the orange. So I'm not using the exact colors that are underneath my painting, under my underpainting, under the tentacles there. I'm just, you know, putting the whatever colors I feel are going to show up best. Because I really think it adds a lot once you get all those little suction cups in there. And you can make them very big, you can make them very small, like I said, they all move independently. So, um, you can put that in your painting. You can really exaggerate them if you want, because when they are sucked up against something, they spread out and they're really big. I think that's what attracts people to octopus, octopi. So I'm going to go through this and keep on painting all my little suction cups in there and alternating my colors. I'm just kind of thinking about what colors I'm using and where they're going to end up when they touch the other suction cups. I don't want them to be the same. That way they all stand out. So it's kind of fun. Here I'm painting some more purple on the orange. Go back and finish that tip. I'm sorry, that's got cut out of the camera there. I wanted to zoom in so that you could see though. And now I'm going back inside of all those purple ones and I'm putting a little rose on there. I got a little school of fish that the one tentacle is looking like it could catch a fish. And octopuses, they bury themselves under the sand, so sometimes they're very elusive. You don't even know that they're there. So when you're diving, they're under the sand, and they come out to catch their fish, or they hide in the rocks. So they're kind of shy. There, we keep on painting those. And now as I see all my little circles on there, all my little suction cups, in my mind I'm thinking maybe I want to add a little bit more to the top side of the octopus. Octopus, they all are different like I said, but some of them have a lot of bumps on them and some of them have almost looks like ruffly, 
ruffles on them. And they come very small, like an inch long and, or huge. But I thought I would just continue that circle pattern, that kind of cratery look on the top of the legs there. So then it kind of goes with the head. So I'm just going to use that Doc PH Martin Bleed Proof Proof White. I'm having trouble with that. Doc PH Martin Bleed Proof White uh, on top there of my little double zero brush. Put a little bit on his head and on his face as they come down. I don't want to cover up too much of my lines in there, so I just kind of gradually faded them off. So I'm not going all the way to the end either of the tentacles. I'm just gradually fading to where that they are no more. And in my shadow, I don't want to put the bright white in the shadow, so I'm going to avoid that area. And I just started to do this now instead of finishing all those little suctions because that was a lot to paint on that left side, so I don't, don't have as many on the right side to do. <laughs> I take a little break and move on to do something else, and now I'm going to come back and finish up all of these little suction cups. Just the same as I did on the other side, and there's not as many. So you can see the painting uh, coming to its finish here. You can see what it's going to look like. You can see what those little water droplets in the wet paint did. And I made a little splash there, but just dab it up. Now in a painting like this, you do have to finish it. You don't have to frame it, like I said, but you can finish it. Um, what I finish it to seal it anyway. So what I did is I put Dorland's wax, D-O-R-L-A-N-D. Wax, it's like a soft wax paste, almost like what you would use to wax the car, maybe even um, a little bit softer than that. And you just wipe it on with your fingers and let it dry and put three coats on and then buff it with a soft cloth, like I said before. And you can get it really super shiny if you want. But I just kind of leave it a list of the gloss. So if you like my video, if you would please subscribe, that helps me grow my YouTube channel. And press the like button, ring the bell if you want notifications. And I wish you peace and love in your all your days. So be creative, be colorful, be swift art. Bye-bye for now. See you next time.